Hi everyone, Donna here with Bookkeeping Made Simple. I am coming to you from my parents' home in Western Kentucky. We had an opportunity to go visit them and I always take it. Um, there comes a point in your parents' lives when you realize it, the clock's ticking. Um, so I felt it was important to spend as much time with them as I can. I live in Utah, they live in Western Kentucky, so we take every chance we can. Um, anyway, I wanted to talk today about procrastination. I know that is not a quote unquote an accounting topic, but it is a business topic. It is something that we all deal with, um, kind of all struggle with. I know I do. Um, so I want to start it off by kind of defining it and then also um, discussing how to overcome it. And there's a number of tricks that I use uh, and a, couple, a bunch of tricks that I have um, implemented and read about and, and tried to, to do. So um, it's not laziness. It's not the same thing as being lazy. Uh, oh, before I really dive into this, as always, if you enjoy these videos, if you find them interesting, entertaining, or you just like to watch, please like, share, and subscribe. Help me share and spread the word. Um, we're having some problems with our Facebook page, which these videos go to. Um, not sure how to fix that, but I um, guess I'm going to have to come up with something pretty soon. Anyhow, <laughs> um, anything that we can do to get the word out. I try to put a lot of really good content out on these videos that are going to be helpful to business owners. Um, because business ownership is one of the hardest things. It's right up there with parenting. It's one of the hardest things you will ever enjoy. Um, and I want to help business owners um, make the most of their time and become highly profitable. So with that, I'm going to dive in. Um, honestly, a lot of people conflate procrastination with laziness. Uh, they're not the same thing. They can be, I guess, but they're they're not typically the same thing. Um, when you procrastinate, you are choosing actively to select a different activity over the one that you don't really want to do. And this is where I, way back in the days when I first started my first business, um, I started a virtual assistance business. And uh, I would tell people, and, and even in the early days of bookkeeping, I would tell people to, no, oh, all that stuff you push to the back of your desk because you just really don't want to deal with it. That's the stuff we do. <laughs> and the fact is everybody has a pile at the back of the desk that they are uh, concerned about. They don't want to deal with. It's too hard. It's too difficult. It's not in their wheelhouse. It's, it's something that's um, similar to a, a video I watched on ADHD um, which I evidently have, uh, where she was showing that, oh, really it was three tasks and it expanded to like 10 because she had to do other things before she could even do the tasks that she had given herself. And that's why she got overwhelmed. Um, usually procrastination is pretty active. Um, in my own life, it shows up as the, you know, oh, I need to cook dinner. But before I can cook dinner, I have to wash the dishes. And before I can wash the dishes, I have to empty the dishwasher. And before I can empty the dishwasher, I have to wipe down the countertop so I have a clean place for them to go. And now my time that I've allotted to do this because I use the Pomodoro technique, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute, um, is gone. And I still haven't done the dishes. I still haven't cleaned up the kitchen. I haven't cooked dinner. Um, it's usually something like that. Or uh, a lot of homemakers will get this reference. I started cleaning in the bedroom and I had to go put something away in the living room and I got sidetracked by this other thing. Um, that's not necessarily procrastination. That's more of um, just being sidetracked. Or, um, you know, I'll sit down to do client work and then I'll go, oh, I have to do this other thing. Uh, I... Uh, I'm here in Paducah. I have a, a a client that's about an hour and a half away. And I sat down yesterday. I did this yesterday. Okay. I sat down yesterday and said, I need to do some client work. But as long as I'm here, I need to go see my client. 
that's here because I don't get to come out to see her very often. And I want her to feel good about having hired us. So I did drop everything and went down to Tennessee and met with my client and um, enjoyed talking with her, kind of got up to speed on where she's feeling overwhelmed and how we can help um, and what I need to do to make sure that this work is being completed appropriately. Um, so I made a lot of notes and, and it wasn't that it was a bad thing to do, it was something that needed to be done. But there's always an opportunity cost. So the time that I spent driving to Tennessee, it's an hour and a half drive, um, meeting with the client and driving back is time that I could not spend working on other client things. And it was a much easier task than doing projections or tax returns. So that's really what, what procrastination looks like. I chose an easier task, one that I thought was more enjoyable than the ones that I gave myself a deadline out. <laughs> um, that's what procrastination is. It's not laziness. It's just these things are uncomfortable, so I don't want to do them. And it's different for everyone. You know, in my case, it was a bunch of things that all needed my time at once. And I, I had to make some decisions based on when we're leaving, how much time do I have here? How important it is, is it for me to visit with this client? And I felt it was it was really important. Um, but when you procrastinate, you're really choosing to do something other than what you've, you've uh, set out for yourself to do or something you should, you know, you should be doing. Laziness just, uh, to me, laziness is just laying on the couch, um, watching TV, not doing much of anything as opposed to procrastination, which is I have two tasks that I need to do. I'm going to do the easy one. Um, the problem is, I don't know about you, but when I know I've been procrastinating, I feel bad about myself because I, I try to develop this persona of being sharp and on top of things and organized. And even my husband believes this. <laughs> um, and it's not always as true as I would like it to be. I, I kind of laugh and say, my husband tells me I'm so organized. I'm like, it's, it's chaos. It's chaos in my brain. And I just learn how to present it in a way that isn't um, chaotic. Uh, and I was like, if you, if you spent a day in my brain, you, there's a reason why I'm out of my mind most of the time. It's dark and scary in there. Uh, anyway, um, so I've had to, and with ADHD, um, it's really easy to procrastinate because it's easy for me to want to do the easy things so I can tick them off my task list. So I feel like I'm being productive, even though at the end of the day, sometimes I feel like I didn't get everything done that I wanted to do because I underestimate the amount of time it took to do something. I overestimate um, my willingness to do it sometimes, or um, I have a hard stop at five so I can shift gears and, and move to, uh, and that's five mountain time, by the way. Uh, so I can shift gears and move to um, studying because I have like four classes left for my master's degree and I want to get them done and knocked out. Um, so I want to talk about how to, um, how to stop procrastinating. One of my techniques is to use a Pomodoro timer. So I, uh, Pomodoro technique involves setting a timer for 25 minutes and then taking a five minute break. The idea is to just get started. If I can take that 25 minutes and just get started, I will probably not take any breaks because I'll be in, involved in what I'm doing. Uh, and the breaks that I take are never something else that uses my brain because accounting is pretty, it's pretty in depth. It uses a lot of brain power, um, but I want to make sure that the, the tasks that I do on my breaks on my Pomodoro timer are, are things like clean the kitchen, do the laundry, uh, since I'm fortunate enough to work from home. Um, something that doesn't require me to think. I can still think about any problems that I'm working on without sitting in front of the computer and looking at a blank screen. Um, so that's the very first thing. Uh, actually, even before that, 
make a plan. What do you have to get done today? Um, and I like time blocking for this, although I'm always looking for better ways of doing that, which means I chunk out blocks of time on my calendar and it does a lot for me. For one thing, it helps me to visually see how much I can do in a day. A tax return on average takes me about an hour to complete. If they're complicated, it may take a lot longer, um, but on average, it takes me about an hour. Um, so I can actually put that on my calendar. And if something comes up, I have to move that hour block somewhere else. Um, so it helps me visualize how much time it takes. I also use a timer to determine how long it really takes me to do a task. Um, but when I start a task, I know I said I blocked out an hour to do a tax return. I will stick with that tax return until I'm done. And then I will make a note of how long it took me and why it took so long or why it was a short one. Um, so that I can better estimate um, how long it takes me to do tax returns. So I can decide um, how many tax returns I can do in a day, for example, without burning out. Um, like I said, I always finish my tasks. I have, I used to use time blocking very, very particularly. So I would time block an hour and I would work on a task for an hour and then I would move on to the next thing. I don't, <clears throat> what would happen though, excuse me. <clears throat> what would happen though, is I'd end up with eight half done tasks. So I finally decided to Yes, I'll time block a task for an hour. If I'm still working on it at the end of that hour, I will keep working on it till I'm done. Because most of the things that I do don't really take a lot of um, time. And it's more work for me to get back into that task than it does for me to stop and restart. So I will continue to work on it till it's done. And then, like I said, I will, on my calendar, I'll actually expand the time block to reflect the actual time spent so that when that task comes up again, which invariably it does, I now know how long it takes. I don't have to sit there and, oh, get, how long do I think it's going to take? I can absolutely tell you how long it's going to take based on, um, based on past experience. It leaves me, it doesn't leave me with tasks half finished. All my tasks will be done. It helps me to plan ahead for time blocking for similar tasks in the future. And it helps me to, uh, you know, I have a plan to start with my for my day. So I know what I'm supposed to be working on. Um, again, the time blocking is so critical for me because it actually helps me visualize. These are the only things I can get done today. And if I put anything else into the schedule, if I procrastinate, something has to be moved. Now, number one kind of pet peeve for me is distractions. Um, the biggest distraction I have is almost six feet tall and about 180 pounds. He loves to have my attention, um, which is fine and great most of the time. But there's times when I'm, you know, head down, I'm really working on something. And again, it's really hard for me to task switch. Your mileage might vary. I'm speaking from my own experience. Personally, if I get interrupted at the wrong moment when I'm in the middle of a task, it's easy for me to forget to do something important, like add an attachment to an email or uh, or you know complete this you know double check a, a tax return or something. I have to, there's times when I just cannot be interrupted. So I will, uh, when I'm working, I turn off all of my notifications on my phone. Um, I turn off everything as far as in my notification center on my PC, because I don't want notifications popping up and convincing me to switch over to Facebook or to switch over to um, any social media or maybe news outlets. I do follow financial news um, or, you know, getting up to go to lunch when it's not on my schedule. Or you know, I just don't need those interruptions when I'm focused on deep work. So I, my number one concern is my clients. 
and I want to make sure that I'm serving them well. So there's times when I just can't be interrupted. Um, I try to mitigate interruptions or manage them by locking the door to my office, by um, maybe putting a sign on my office door that says I'm in the middle of a tax return. I can't be interrupted right now by delegating to my employees. Um, so I, I just want to make sure that I, I make, that I manage those interruptions as much as I can. Social media is probably the biggest one. So, uh, cause it's really easy and it's, it's easy to seek that dopamine break by, um, by, do I not have, oh, okay. <laughs> Didn't see my little green light on my microphone icon. So I wanted to make sure I had sound. Um, but I want to make sure that I am managing my interruptions so that, you know, maybe I take a break and I go spend time with my husband because he, he likes to spend time with me. Or I take a break and I go help my mom while I'm here. Or I take a break and I go move the laundry through. But I have to have a, when I have a planned break and not just from someone walking into my office. It's, um, ADHD is kind of a bear that way. And it's, it, Again, it can be really hard for me to get back on track. So I try to make sure that if I'm working on something where I can't be interrupted, that I throw everybody out of my office and shut the door and put a sign on it and, and tell everyone, I can't be interrupted right now. I'll come out as soon as I'm done. And the final thing is be kind to yourself. Give yourself some grace. We're not perfect. None of us are perfect. You're never going to get to the end of your to-do list. Uh, that's just the way it is. Um, it's frustrating for me because I'll, I'll think, oh, I got three or four things done on my to-do list. And then I will get a phone call and it'll add three more things to the bottom of to-do list. So I'm just, um, I've had to kind of understand that there's, there's things that I can do to manage and there's things that I can't do. So I'm never going to get to the end of that to-do list. I can just keep changing what needs to be done. So I do go through and I analyze what has to be done today. What have I promised to a client by this date? What have I, what has a deadline that I absolutely must meet? And I will also use my project management skills to, um, to reverse engineer my time. So let's say I'm taking a class and it has 20 chapters and I know it takes me mm, four hours to work through a chapter and I can do that in an evening. Well, then I know that I can be completely done in 20 days and take the test on the 21st day. If I miss a day, then maybe I need to double up, but I can give myself some grace. So if I know it's going to take me 20 days, I grant myself 30 days to get it done so that I have a little bit of wiggle room. Um, and I've often told clients, I will tell you a longer time frame than I think it's actually going to take, because if I get it done sooner, I'm going to look like a rock star. But if it takes me longer, I'm going to look like a flake. So, um, so I do, you know, give myself a lot of time, maybe more time than I need to, um, to produce deliverables for my clients. Because I know it's much, it looks so much better to come back and say, oh, I got it done early than it does to say, oh, well, I'm I'm overwhelmed and I didn't get it done. Um, so the first step is to recognize that you're procrastinating, which is pretty easy. Um, if you fill your day with low priority tasks, you want to fill, you want to eat the frog. Um, so you want to get those high priority tasks done first. Um, if you leave items on your to-do list for a long time, even though they're important, um, you're procrastinating doing that task. Um, if you, if uh, one of the ways I procrastinate a lot, especially first thing in the morning, because I am not a morning person, is to go get a drink, go just to get up and walk around, or um, wait for the right mood. That's never going to happen. And you need to understand why. And usually it's poor organization. It's, it's just not an enjoyable task. It maybe it feels like it's going to take forever. I can't tell you how many times I hit 
procrastinated on things because I just felt it was going to take five hours to do this. It took 20 minutes. So that's where the, the measuring my time blocking, the measuring how long it does it really take me to do something. I know from experience, for example, that it takes me seven minutes to make up the bed if I wash the sheets. I mean, make up the bed from the mattress protector on up. Um, so I really want to make sure that I know how long a task is going to take and that I am prepared to spend that time. I don't want to underestimate how long it's going to take because that's going to throw my schedule off. I'd rather overestimate it a little bit um, and then put it on my calendar in reasonable chunks of time so that I can get it done. Um, also, a lot of people will procrastinate because they are afraid of success. And this sounds really weird to a lot of people, but it's true. Um, with success comes more responsibilities. So the more successful I am, the more employees I need to hire, the more administrative tasks I need to do, the more managing I need to do, it actually becomes a lot more work. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of work to be successful. It's also a lot of work to fail. So um, choose your heart and I'll do, a biz, uh, I'll do a video on choosing your heart later. Um, and if you're a per perfectionist like I am, you are probably going to procrastinate because you want to have time to do it perfectly. If you can't do it perfectly, you don't need to do it at all, right? So um, to, in order to overcome it, like I said, I use the Pomodoro timer. I make, I prioritize my task list. I put it on my calendar and I start working on the first thing on the list. I keep working on that thing until it's done. If I need to juggle things around to the next day, because I only do one day at a time on calendar blocking. I don't try to calendar block the whole week. I put all of my appointments on my calendar as they come up. But um, calendar blocking, as I'm trying to manage my tasks, I do that once a day. So I do that first thing in the morning. I will block out enough time. You know, how much time does it take me to do to do forecasting for this client? How much time is it going to take me to do this tax return? And I'll begin at the beginning. And then I will start um, start working on the first task. I'll finish that task because most of mine don't take days and days. Sometimes they do if they're if they're not client facing. Um, I'll, be, I'll start at the first task and I and I want to complete it. When it's complete, I will go back to my calendar and and adjust that time block so that it reflects the actual amount of time it took. Again, I want to be able to look back and say, oh, it really takes me 30 minutes to do a tax return if it's just W-2 income. But if it's one with rentals and stock trading, it's going to take me two hours. So I want to make sure that I, that I know how much time to block for specific tasks. Um, And then I just keep working down the list. So if I have a task that runs from nine to 10, but that task, and I have another one from 10 to 11, but my first task ran over till 11, then I'm going to shift everything down. I do have to put it around other things um, like appointments out of the office, like travel, like, um, you know, miscellaneous other things. So I need to make sure that I, I'm accounting for my meetings and accounting for the actual amount of time I know these tasks are going to take. And then when I finish the first task, no matter how long it takes, I move on to the second and I will rearrange my calendar as I go. And sometimes it will flow into the next day and that's okay. As long as I'm planning for it, it helps me understand how long these tasks actually take. When I know how long it takes and I'm not thinking it's gonna be trying to eat an elephant um, all at once, then, it, then that for me, that overcomes procrastination. So that's, um, I can go on and on about this particular subject. I'm going to go ahead and close the video, but I am looking forward to hearing from you. If there's a particular subject you would like me to discuss or a topic you'd like me to discuss, please feel free to leave it in the comments. I read them. Um, and I am looking forward to hearing from you and talking to you again soon.